Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to the video. This is going to be fun, all right? I had had an idea a week ago, and I was trying to think of something different to do on my YouTube channel, but like a project that we could do together. <laughs> and so the original idea was I wanted to try to create a very low commitment um, uh, concept for people that want to draw, but for whatever reason don't have a lot of time or maybe don't have a lot of experience or, and... and uh, you know, the idea I had was, like, I think every person on the planet could probably sacrifice 30 minutes a day to draw. If they really wanted to draw, there's some point in the day where you could find 30 minutes. But ultimately, I didn't really think that, that uh, I mean, you, there wasn't a series of videos that I could do out of it. And you're going, like, what is this list, Rich? Some people probably are already picking up on where we're going with this. <laughs> so I thought, well... I could probably put aside one hour a day to do something for YouTube that could be very interactive. And so what we're going to do is we're at the very least, we'll see how it goes and what the interest is. We're going to create an original image comics, like vintage character. And I couldn't remember. I think it was in an old image comics. They had a list of like six names and then six last names. And you could sort of mix and match and create your image comics character but i don't i don't know where what what magazine it was in and uh i just made up my own it was pretty easy to do it was pretty fast and just coincidentally like silent and dragon ended up not only being on it but like across from each other this is a comic book name but it's totally coincidence that uh one, that they're even on here, and two, that they're actually, like, lined up, because I wasn't thinking of the book. But anyway, other than that, um, what we're going to do is you guys are going to all vote in the comment section. I'm going to create this character or team, whatever we decide. And uh, so what you'll do is is pick one name from this column, one name from this column. That's going to be the name of the character. And then we'll talk about the character a little bit. And you guys will vote again. And we're going to design it together. And then I'll, at the very least, do like a pinup or a cover or maybe even like a double page spread of this character in action. <laughs> and if, if it does well enough and people are into it, maybe we could do it as a comic book. Like maybe I could knock out like a 20 page book. <laughs> we'll we'll do it i'm still working on blaster kid to be clear but i wanted to do something that i could i could have everyone participate in and i don't feel like i'm constantly showing spoilers and um you know what i mean like like it's like i don't want to keep showing bits of um like a movie i'm working on but but i i still want to have something unique to do on youtube so yeah so this is what we're gonna do first and then we're gonna look at some vintage image comics art to whet our appetite of what we're into and uh, anyway, so let's look at the list really quick. We've got blood. We've got fire, shadow, storm, fury, power, silent. Maybe it's the silent killer. <laughs> Metal destroyer. Fear nation. I mean, look, this stuff writes itself. You put this, something from this column in with this, it's a done deal. We've got a hit on our hand. The power killer. <laughs> mind fist <laughs> i wanted like like i i the mind was interesting because I, I i i think of this as like a character that like maybe like a doctor strange or or someone that really has like super like super powerful like like telekinesis or um maybe like um i'm trying to think of the dungeons and dragons term for it but uh you know destructive powers of their mind maybe they're just a savage Savage justice, savage death, storm, uh, storm death. <laughs> anyway, so have fun with it. Come up with one, and and also if if you feel that the list is incomplete and we want to add on more names, we could do a short video where I add like five on each list. So if you feel like these, like if I didn't do this justice, shadow justice, then let me know. And we'll, I still want everyone to vote, though, so that's the caveat, is we can add more names to either the front or back, but uh, let's all vote together on the final one, and then whatever the highest votes is, that's what we'll do. So anyway, um, yeah, you let me know, and we'll, if, the, if, if there's enough requests for more options, then we'll add five to each list, so, so you can suggest five other ones, and then we'll do it another vote. 
All right, now let's look at some art, and then we'll come back to this at the very end really quick. So, uh, Chapel. He doesn't fall into our list. He's not called Chapel Kill. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I was just I was trying to think of books from back in this era that were kind of fun, and and I'm not gonna draw it necessarily in the style. I'll do my own style, but uh, yeah, we can let our imaginations run wild. What it was is I was gonna um, I was gonna revisit each of the original core um, launch books. So I was gonna do a video on Shadowhawk. I was gonna do a video on Spawn Number One. I was gonna do a video on Cyberforce Number One. Just uh, I like at least the Image Founders books. And I've been brewing this idea for a while. And in fact, I should mention this too, because I want to plug uh, Dan Fraga, Fraga uh, his channel. Now that we all know it's Fraga, not Fraga. Fraga Boom is okay. Fraga is what we call him. But uh, I was splitting up art with Dan on the phone today. And we had a really awesome conversation. So if you haven't followed Couch Doodle's channel on YouTube, I would highly, highly recommend it. One, Dan is a fantastic penciler and inker. And, and I mean, he can draw his butt off. But on top of that, he's a wealth of comic book information. I don't know many people, honestly. And I know tons of people that are not only comic fans, but comic pros. Dan knows comic books really, really well. If you want to learn about comics and, and entrench yourself in that world, he's a great person to uh, talk to. And he's very um, approachable. So that's awesome, too. All right. So let's just get a little taste of the chapel. The one penciler that worked on this book was really good. So this is Liefeld with Platt inks, I guess. It's an interesting combination. Or Danny Mickey. Maybe maybe Liefeld and Platt. It looks like maybe... I'm not sure what Platt did. Maybe Platt did this part down here and Rob did this and then Danny Mickey inked it. So, oh, let's go into full screen mode. Uh, Alright, well, I guess this will be the last time that I show this list. So, yeah, either pick a name from here or recommend five more and I'm going to shut this and we're going to move through the other stuff. I think we could come up with a decent name here, but I did feel like maybe we needed more options of archetypes. So, uh, other animals or sort of, you know, um, descriptive uh, character traits kind of fall into this category. And then these are usually like, you know, verbs. Verbs and just like words that are like very descriptive, blood, fire, shadow, storm. They usually will work out pretty good that way. So if you have other... Um, you know, things along this line. I guess these aren't really verbs. I take it back. Um, but uh, anyway, I think you get the idea. All right, let's go. No, we're not going to save it. All right, so this penciler is really good. And I think his name is Cal Ir Calvin Irving, maybe? We'll see in a second. But he's a really interesting style. It's definitely, there's a lot of nods to Jim Lee's um, Death Blow in here. And again, I'm not I'm not using these as a style reference for myself. I just wanted to give you guys a little flavor of the the image uh, thing. I, th I thought this guy's stuff is cool. We'll move through some of these pages fast, but that's right out of Death Blow, right there. This is the last spread from Shadowhawk. We'll get to it in a second. They show that I've got the whole spread, but you know, I thought it would be fun. Yeah, look at this. Look at that. So here's, I think I've shared this story before about Shadowhawk. So when I first started collecting comics, Image Comics were already coming out. So I was not collecting right at the moment when these books came out. But what was funny is Shadowhawk was the most expensive back issue of all the Image books at my local comic shop. Shadowhawk number one. So I never got it. Because <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to spend that much money on, on Shadowhawk. I think I flipped through it, and I was like, eh, the art is okay. Even back then, I was starting to get a little picky of what I liked. And I don't think it's bad by any means, but it just wasn't necessarily my exact cup of tea, so to speak. So, uh, yeah, never really followed Shadowhawk. I did pick up later issues, though, to be clear. I did get the one where the helmet comes off. I have that. Don't look at the bottom there. You didn't see that. Some of the drawings in here are pretty interesting too. It's it's Jim Valentino had one of the more interesting styles of all the image founders because it's definitely reminds me of old school uh, Marvel. We're gonna keep bouncing back and forth between Calvin's stuff, I think, because the way the pages are numbered. This guy's stuff is very very cool though. I don't know what he went on to do, but uh, he's a good artist. Like there's some very very cool art in here. It's classic. 
yeah so we'll 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 pick the character name then we're gonna design the character we'll have a vote for like weaponry <laughs> if you want to give the character 500 different weapons it's it's fine whatever we want we're gonna do it together <laughs> hey it's team seven that's lynch that's that's grifter's dad i wonder if this is like a crossover with that this is so funny because there's so many early pages of artists that I like that drew kind of like this. That like if you find like their earliest, earliest pro work, it's it's almost everyone sort of draws the same early on, unless they ha had different influences. Like if you came up with this, then you would you would draw differently. This, this is this is very much a style. It's, this has got to be Team Seven, right? I don't think I have all of these comics, but I definitely have some of these. This is great. It's really cool. Cool little drawing. But yeah, I thought this would be really fun, and we'll maybe we'll design some monsters and just goof around with it and see what we can do. But I but the the point of it being is to encourage you to draw. You know what I mean? Like like to show you that it shouldn't be that intimidating, and that you can really kind of go into it with a sort of fun spirit. And it doesn't always have to be this, like, serious thing. You can make it as serious as you want, though. That's the thing. Your mileage may vary. You can have it be on a scale from 1 to 10, a 2. Or what I like is the 13. <laughs> Go beyond 10. Full force. Yeah, look at this. He's mad. You can tell because his nostrils are flared. This is some really, really interesting coloring. <laughs> it's like red and green and peach. A couple of shades of that. Got some more dark, darker colors. And then uh, this. It's very like, uh, what would you call it? Like primary colors? Is that what I'm thinking of? Like red, yellow, green, blue. But this was the transition of, of digital colors. I mean, you can see, look at this. This is colored really, really old school style. Like, he didn't go for the image colors, really. His gun. I can't really talk shit about his gun, though, because it's, it's probably more accurate than any gun I would draw. We'll get there, though. I already told you guys. My commitment to learning to draw better guns is, is in me. It already was. Someone mentioned it, but I already knew. So, you only get half credit. <laughs> you get half credit for your suggestion, because I already knew that I was bullshitting my guns. You have to bullshit something. That's just the way it goes. You can't have it all memorized right out of the gate. This is cool. This is very Jim Lee. Jim Lee. Jim Lee. Studio Jim Lee. I've actually been getting very into M Miyazaki lately. I think he's pretty cool. <laughs> Sounds funny. It's like it's like saying, Frazetta, he's pretty good. Look at this. This is that bright colors again, though. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like a rainbow. But th this is so different than the Shadowhawk colors. Those heads. They would get those really wide heads. It's crazy. But yeah, I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. I'm excited to see what I'm going to come up with. Wait till we wait till we start working on it. It's going to be fun. But yeah, I'm going to put aside one hour a day for it. And we'll I'll do videos about it probably two to three times a week. It won't be everything that I do, but I needed to mix it up. My channel is getting stale. I've felt like that for a long time. And uh, you have to just have variety. It's just the way that it is. But I wanted to keep it about comics. You know, like you kick around ideas and you go, well... I like heavy metal. Maybe I could do a heavy metal day. And it's like, no, no, Rich. They don't want that. They want comic or art related stuff. She knows. <laughs> Send him in, Ricardo. See, si, ma'am. See, si, I will do that for you. That's pretty good timing. Ricardo. Ricardo Savage. All right. So, okay, let's move fast. It's a nice little suggestion of a gun. I, I do like that. 
I almost opened up uh, Wildcats Trilogy by Jay Lee because I always need an excuse to look at Jay Lee, and YouTube has been a good excuse to always pursue that. His it's funny because when this guy doesn't like take a lot of time on his drawings, his drawings get like this. Um, but you could see this would be a habit that he would slip back into because the head gets very um, sort of squished and a little distorted. But then when, when he's looking at his Jim Lee stuff, it doesn't do that. This is, it was weird. The comic kept ba bouncing back and forth between these two styles. So I'm assuming it's like flashbacks and then the current day because the colors are quite different too. But this is that, that more um, sort of fruity colors. But there's like, this would actually probably look better in black and white. Let's do this for a second. I'm going to try to remove just a little bit of the gray. Yeah, like like this and the splatter and stuff like that. Me. Kind of like, you can see like it's a little more edgy. Still, he's drawing a lot, so there's... Um, it's not as representational as some like Jaylee stuff, but again, this is just so <clears throat> like Marvel... I don't really know Ron. This is funny too. Like he letters, like the like he writes out fifteen in like his his handwriting. It's so, there's so much love <laughs> in every page. No, but uh, yeah, it reminds me of Ron Lim. But I don't really even know Ron Lim's work well enough to say if that's an accurate um, comparison. But it it looks like what I picture Ron Lim's work to look like. I, I often wonder what happened to that guy because I just I know he was still very popular when I was collecting, but but he was um, kind of more of a, um, a like a I think a Marvel artist, and so Image got so big that I think sometimes the the people that stayed at Marvel got like a, a little bit lost in the shuffle. But I haven't heard much about Ron Lim in like years. But I do see s convention sketches of of his, so I know he goes and does shows. But maybe he has a different job, and just his comic shows, um, you know, for fun. If anyone knows, let me know because I'd be curious of what whatever happened to him. There's a particular thing that like, these like some of these poses that that um, Valentino does are quite nice. But whenever he does these really dynamic poses, the one thing that I was I was noticing is they all look very familiar to me. Like like he's got like a comic out and he works out the pose that way. It's just my own opinion on it. But the structure on this, which looks more like he drew it, doesn't look like this to me. Like this looks like this is like a Jim Lee drawing or someone like that. And then this looks like just completely different look at the anatomy you don't you don't go from this to this <laughs> it just doesn't happen friends i'm here to tell you it doesn't happen don't look at the bottom of the pages you didn't see that i don't i don't i can't even get to most of my comic collection i apologize but it's just the way that it is my books are so they're so blocked in Especially since COVID nineteen, because I have five hundred cans of um, raviolis and <laughs> tuna in case in case I can't get in there. So let's move past this a little bit. He does. It's funny. He really like draws this in an unusual way. Like that muscle doesn't start or stop anywhere. Here, watch. I'll show you what I mean. We'll get. I'll give a. Okay, my uh, USB disconnected for a second, but here I'll show you what I'm talking about really fast on this muscle. I didn't want to have to edit this video, but it looks like I'm going to have to. So let's do this. So with your anatomy, what ends up happening is muscles have like start and stop points. So this is like your pec. I think they call it pec. make it a little bigger but yeah he he makes it so round it just looks like it doesn't it doesn't like this overlaps this muscle so this muscle comes out and through this and it's like 
and your muscles attach to bone. So, hopefully, you can kind of see what I'm getting at. And then I always stress this for all my Patreon friends: just make sure you're thinking of it as form, because it'll really help you. Oops, sorry. It'll help you render things. And you can kind of, this muscle you can split up quite a bit, depending on how crazy you want to get with it. But they're all their own chunk. So there, you got a little bit of a drawing lesson really fast. But yeah, his his muscles are very bloopy. But this is okay. This, but you'll see what I'm saying when I take all this out. And I'm not player hating on Valentino. He's clearly a talented artist because he's drawing pages and they're they're very consistent. He just has a different style. But you see what I'm saying, how round that is? And it doesn't look like it comes from underneath this muscle. It, it feels like it's almost in front of it. Like it's like this sort of bulbous thing. So he just needs to tuck it in. And in, in it, it bulges when the arm comes up. So if the arm was coming up like this, then you would really get that that bulge but when your arm is down it's going to be relaxed so it's going to be more elongated anywho <laughs> i can't escape the teacher in me no i'm just kidding i never would have thought i would have been doing any kind of lessons that's crazy so all right let's hustle this is a cool page that's really really neat it's a really talented pencil man i, I do like his stuff He's one of those, and so this is the same comic, but di like a different part of the story. This is so Jim Lee. Death Blow. Looks cool, though, you know? But this is mu very much like you are looking at Jim Lee and doing this style. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that he had the comics out. <laughs> but it, it looks really cool. And it would have been very interesting to see what it evolved into. This is a great page. I actually really like this a lot. Like, look at this. This is really, really kick-ass and reminds me of, like, Zafino or... Um, uh, Chuck Dixon wrote a death... Oh, Chris Warner. But this doesn't look like Chris Warner. But, um, I mean, this is a very, very cool page. Very, very cool. This thing is about looking like it's going to fall over. But, um, yeah, that's really nice some more Valentino sorry I think you guys get the idea I'm gonna edit this video up and then we're gonna um see what the votes are for the names this is so cool heads a little a little wonky but I, I, overall I really like the way this stuff looks that's cool yeah I think this will be really fun and it's something interactive and it kind of falls into what is what, why I got excited about the idea one I thought it was sort of unique and something a little different that we could do but two it is it does kind of touch on the like let's create a comic book online together because in theory is if if I get excited enough about it I can do the the little pinup piece or the cover piece or the spread that we do and then and then we can just start to make up a story we'll figure I'll figure out a way to have people vote kind of like a choose your own adventure create some bad guys in a, a scenario like is it going to take place in present day the past the future um you know like it, it'd be, it would, i think it would be pretty interesting sounds fun it's like what else do we got to do we're all locked in with covid19 and the world is turned into some crazy thing that we would have never have imagined five months ago let's enjoy some comic game <laughs> Where is, there was a page that Valentino drew that caught my eye when I opened it. I can't remember if it was a really good drawing, something that reminded me of something else. I like this panel. This looks fun. This guy's got a, he creates some pretty decent atmosphere too. Calvin Irving. Oh, this is the full spread. It's funny. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's hysterical. I, uh, you know, it's funny. Like, uh, it's gonna point out the knee. I, it's like, 
Dude's definitely, he must have drawn, I bet he was working professional at least for a few years before he did, um, see this panel leads me to believe that, that, uh, what, what Kitty? You think so too? She thinks that some of the other stuff might have been referenced. <laughs> The, the huts that were on the river and the, the like the canoes or whatever that were coming in. It's, it's definitely a different style than what he draws here. This is great, though. Man, that's some really, really cool um, atmosphere and sort of ferocity with this. This all looks very, very cool. Um, I had a friend that drew a lot like this named Lance Sells. In fact, he was up for that chapel book, believe it or not. I think he he lost out to that that Calvin Irving guy, but Lance actually was really really good, um, and uh, easily could have done this book. He did some samples. In fact, I actually have the originals here somewhere. If I ever come across them, I'll show them. Um, but uh, yeah, Lance drew a lot like this and was gunning for I think this book. This guy's good, man. There's no two ways about it. That's nice. It's got a little bit of like a Wolf's Portachio um, kind of thing going on too. This is all really dynamic. That's not easy to do. This stuff is is at a pretty high level, honestly. These are great gestures and uh, very well executed little little panels. Perfect amount of detail. That's great too. And we've looked at uh, books from this era, other books and stuff like this. Uh, I mean, this is pretty strong. Um, I don't. I I never had heard of this guy before he did this, but I'm trying to think back because I remember Lance talking about him a little bit. Um, that I can't remember what where he was from, meaning like what what it, what um, profession he came from. Like if he was our this is gnarly. I like he's smiling. Okay, is this the, <laughs> Running, 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 running across the rooftop. This is pretty funny, too. Let's I'll point this out. I hate to be critical. It's funny that the blood on him. <laughs> Whoever colored this, that's pretty hysterical, actually. They were going to need to up their game for the image boom. That's for sure. Like, if you were coloring like this during this transition, although they're working on a, a very high selling image book. Um, I'd be curious what issue two and three and four of Shadowhawk look like, like if the color evolved or not. I might have to actually look into that myself because now I'm, I'm, I actually am kind of curious because uh, this I don't think would be acceptable for too long. It's funny how he drew the fist like this is what I was coming over here to point out. Is It's just so, like, <laughs> it's got a little, little bit of a sort of a shape to it, but that's pretty funny. And it's conveniently completely straight. Oh, yeah. His face is a little weird. Oh, it was this. This looks like um, Morton Downey Jr. <laughs> I don't know why it reminded me of that. I'm assuming this is supposed to be a black person, but it, it looks like his face looks like Morton Downey Jr. And the cigarette, too, made me think of it, but he's clearly like a, a black guy. Okay, let's keep going. Well, I'll open it. Head like a rap melon. I'm gonna have to Google this guy for this video. This is nice too. He did. He didn't end up doing more. Um, like after this, I don't think he stayed in comics very long. With this kind of a drawing ability, though, I mean, he could have easily have gone into like video games, like movie design, and and probably been pretty successful. This is very dynamic, man. Very very dynamic. This all looks real good. This coloring is just not as fun. Die! Okay, let's wrap this up. Running and running and running. This color is just so bright, too. Look at this guy, though. Man, this is cool. <laughs> let's turn it grayscale. Probably drop some black. Eh, maybe not. Maybe gray. 
The gray looked good, actually. Kill zone. Kill zone. Maybe that could be the name of the book. <laughs> All right, stop playing, Robert. Gonna bore the people. Okay, this is cool. This has got like a little bit of a Pat Lee vibe. When Pat would turn, his heads would get very, very jowly. I inked Pat on Wetworks for, I don't know, like, we were supposed to do a pretty long run. It was almost like, that was getting towards the, almost the end of my career at one point, believe it or not. So I was inking Pat Lee on Wetworks, and um, then Ken Lashley took over, and they were canceling the book, and I almost was, I almost got fired after it, because they didn't have work for me, and Wildstorm was starting to downsize big time, and uh, luckily I made it through. I got the Travis job. But yeah, that was crazy. But yeah, I was inking Pat Lee on Wetworks. We were going to do a run. And uh, this is a great panel, man. This is what I'm talking about. Like this this has a level of quote unquote realism that he might be using photo reference for these panels um, based on that one little photo that he sort of had inset on there. It's a little more hand drawn. This is very like McFar McFarlane, you know, was had backgrounds and some sometimes that would look about like this too. It would depend on Todd's like level of energy that he wanted to put into the stuff, but um, yeah, some sometimes his backgrounds were a little stiff. Sometimes they were really good. I mean, you, I could clearly see that McFarlane was into Frank Miller. There was there's no doubt in my mind that that uh, he was in, influenced by by Miller's stuff because there's a an obvious Frank Miller, especially if you look at those black and white books, you can see it now even more as plain as day, but the color files will get you there. This is all really good stuff, man. Oh, let me go into full screen mode, sorry. It's a nice panel. Down shots. Yeah, it's really good. Really good. I like that he kept the he kept the camera still so that it's like we ended up really like really on top of these guys, but then it fans out a little more. It's nice, nice touch. This is great. Really nice little drawing right here. This is awesome too. Man, it almost feels like a sketch that's just been inked, and that's really, really um cool. His eye is just the tiniest bit off. Let me do this really quick. I, sometimes it's weird. I talk about this um, in some educational videos that you get a, you get something drawn, and it ends up working um, the way that it was. But if you try to actually fix it, what ends up happening is um, then it starts to throw off everything else. Like everything is kind of balanced within sort of the the way that you drew it the first time. And as you start to even stuff out, then all of a sudden the other eye looks weird and it can get kind of funky. You could definitely find a better placement, I think, for this eye. Or maybe even turn it a little. I just like to, I like to do this because I have to problem solve on my own work. So it's important to be able to see this stuff and then also solve the problem, I think. I think that's pretty close because this eye is very far away from the nose too so he's got a distance thing going on anyway but you know, watch well, we'll take it back to how it originally was you'll see what I mean uh, my... it almost goes back to like it's about the same spot oh wait hold on and hold on the rotate eyes a little bigger anyway it's fun to try to work that stuff out this is nice and this, and this almost looks like uh what was that guy's name oh this is funny <laughs> travis did um there was a flash annual that travis drew and then he did a flash sh short story travis charay cherist as some people call him pdru that's weird it's backwards um uh but he drew a car and it looks almost like this with this kind of like lighting it's so funny because it's just so um like you know your first six months in comics and you've got to draw a car and it 
yeah, it's tough. I'm trying to think what it was called. It might have been a Flash Quarterly, but he did he did a longer Flash story. But he's got a short story where it's just the Flash running around the city and uh, like uh, I think he's in a race with someone. There's cops in it, but even some of his uh, the first two issues of Dark Stars, issue four and issue five are kind of funky. This is great too. I really like this. This is very dynamic. It's exciting. This is a nice little touch, too. I was always impressed by how good these guys drew at, at such a young age. Because most of the image artists, myself included, when we broke in, we were very, very young. And it just always blows me away that how, how high of a skill level they had. Regardless, I mean, like I said, it's fun to poke fun at sort of the goofiness of some of the image stuff. But, but I mean, you know, this guy might be... 19 20 years old he could be 23 still pretty young to be to be drawing stuff at this level but that's kind of what it is you know but then people ask me is it ever too late no it's not too late because uh, an 18 year old that can draw well how long have they been drawing it couldn't be that long you put in you know one to three years of hard work you could be drawing good but you have to be committed to it so that's the that's the answer is someone that's young and good hasn't really been doing it that long you know so you have to take your older person um life experience and you know you'll have better damage control of like if you're wasting time and whatnot and and we have so many educational resources now online for free and stuff that you can subscribe to for one dollar three dollar five dollars on patreon <laughs> um or lessons or review tiers. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know what I mean? We have opportunities that these guys have. This looks a little travis -y. It's funny. That that looks like Travis. And this looks a little like from um, some of his Wildcat stuff. I'm trying to think of what book it was. Like, maybe Wildcat's 15? Look how tiny his head is. So this is what I'm talking about, where <coughs> he starts to lose structure, although this character's obviously got, like, a pretty unique, like, he's a child child man or something. Throw it on the list. Child man. That's really, really cool. That's such a nice drawing. This is great, too. This is awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. Yeah, he's kind of got the fire of Safino in his belly. Look at that. Somehow Shadowhawk had a hat on and those big pointy metal ears. This is the power of superheroes. <laughs> His hand is like a little big. But again, you can see that, that when he would use reference, how it was different compared to like when he draws his own sort of like fight poses. That's a really crazy drawing. That's that um, Calvin Irving. Is that his name? We should get there. That green makes me think of the Hulk. I was like, Hulkamania coming at you. Yes, yeah, it's cool. Good stuff. All right. We should be almost at the end. Let's just wrap it up. I'm so, so curious of how many issues of Shadowhawk this color is colored and if their color evolved. Can you imagine, um, like, coloring comic books, and this was how much work you had to put into it? You could do so many pages in a day. It's so funny that he writes the thing. And it's crooked. Do you see that? The E. <laughs> it's going to fly away. It's funny. It's a, There's a charm to it, though. But, yeah, this would be so fast to color pages. Oh, my God. I could do three in an hour easily. Maybe more. One every 15 minutes. Flatting it would take the longest. If I don't even know if they did it. So... Letters, colors. Colors of Digital Chameleon. Interesting. Special thanks to look. Damn. Damn Frega right there. I know him. I know Norm Ratmond. I don't know anyone else. I s s kind of know Rob. I don't really know him. Know him, but I he would... He, I don't, you know, he might not know my name if if I went up to him 
But but uh, if I told him who I was, he would know me. I've met him that many times. <laughs> this is really cool. Jim Lee knows me. <laughs> That's great. Okay, all right. So this is gonna be fun. We're gonna we're gonna create some magic together. And uh, I hope everyone's hanging in there. This is right out of uh, Stormwatch, I think, or maybe it's from Jim. This has a little bit of the Scott Clark uh, sort of anatomy going on. But uh, yeah, it should be fun, and I think it'll 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 be interesting because it's so off the grid of anything. Yeah, Calvin Irving, he's really good, and and the colorist by Byron Talman, I I really like too. So props to these guys; they did a fantastic job. I'm going to Google this dude, because I'd, I'd be curious if he's still around and doing art. And... Okay, so Tom Tenney is the artist that had the more cartoony style. And then Nathan Lum is probably the colorist that did... He may have done both stories, um, but uh, the more bright colors on Tom's work, for sure, at least that. But they were they, they seem to be colored quite differently, at least in my opinion. This is that chromium cover. I you know, I, I eventually did get this comic book, because I have this somewhere. Who is Shadowhawk? I mean it's a great idea for a book. I think that, that Jim maybe wasn't well, I mean, he just isn't at the level of like a Mark Silvestri or a Jim Lee. So it's it's tough when you've got those two guys is and McFarlane too. And Eric Larson is very, very good penciler and Wills. But I mean, those those five. I mean, Mark Silvestri, Jim, Wills, McFarlane. I guess that's four. And and Liefeld, you know, when he's focused, he can draw well. But yeah, Valentino was he was you know he could have used that as a, like a real big kick in the ass to up his game. But he ultimately kind of drifted away from drawing comics. And if you look at the other guys, they're all still doing it to some extent. Maybe Jim does too, and I'm just mistaken. But um, I'd say Silvestri is the closest to sometimes teetering out of comics. But he's still got a pulse, so I'm hopeful for his uh, Batman book. So, all right, that should be it. Oh, no, let's see what we got. What's our character's name going to be? Who knows? Killstorm. <laughs> Blood Thrust. <laughs> But yeah, if you want to recommend more names, we can throw them on the list and expand from there. This is great, too. It's a really cool piece. So, right, have a great day. I'm, I hope that you're all excited about this, and uh, I, I am. I'm curious to see what everyone comes up with. So, right, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Bye.